And we've got to help them recognize that that dysfunction is why they're doing this. But first you got to get to the pain. And a lot of reasons there's pain is because they never had a true example. There's a lot of people that are raised in Christian homes but do not know the love of Christ because the quote Christian home does not know the love of Christ. It is, it is, it is broken. They've not sold out. They've not totally given over to Christ to let Christ love through them. And just like we talked about in Proverbs, the loving Christian environment let everything and anything happen and didn't care, and that's what the kid picked up on. So they became this. Well, oh, I get attention over here, so that's the way I'm going to go. The adults do the same thing. And because they don't have a true example of Christ... They don't know what it looks like to truly understand. And we'll just go with the three we have. Love, joy, and peace. They can't be at peace if they don't know what peace is. That's why they're astray. They can't feel any love. Because they don't know what it is. Yeah. And if you don't know what it is, you can't give it. Yeah, but they can't get it if they don't. Don't know what it is. They think this is love. You know, a... a a broken girl thinks love is the boyfriend mm -hmm. and what he wants to do to him. That's not love. No, that's the wrong. You know, uh, the broken guy thinks sports. If I'm good enough, they'll like me. Because guys want respect. You know, but they're broken. They're, they're, they're not taking their identity. They don't know who they are because the atmosphere they were raised in didn't know who they were. And it boils down until someone breaks that. The generations will continue being dysfunctional. They might get to heaven, but they will be miserable on earth. But their kids get further and further from God. And you look over the generations over the last 30 years. Grandma, grandpa, probably really on fire for God. Parents are like, okay, we'll go to church just to do it. Look at the kids. I ah, might come once in a while. And then then their kids don't want nothing to do with God because he, he wasn't there for me. And it's the responsibility of the church to be the family of God. See, today's Mother's Day. Most mothers that do have kids think that's it. And most mothers that don't think don't have kids think that's it. But it's not. You know, the church is supposed to be the parent to every adult coming in. If we are on a spiritual journey, when we were babies, we couldn't take care of ourselves. There's spiritual babies walking in churches for 50 years. No one's taught them what it means to be a true follower of God. Then they might hit adolescence. And boy, we know adolescence is a problem. Because I'm going to rebel whether I want to or not because it's simple. Everybody does it. It's the phase we go through. And I'm going to rebel whether I understand what I'm rebelling into or not. But why do I rebel? It's because I don't know who I am. And my family doesn't know who I'm supposed to be. And my family doesn't know who they are. So how can I relate to anything? The, the dysfunction just keeps happening. If it's dysfunctional, it's going to breed dysfunction. And the enemy doesn't care what that dysfunction looks like. He's just going to give it a new shiny coat. Because the dysfunction in, in, in the, the parents' age is different than the kids. The kids have it so much harder today than we ever thought we did. Because they're throwing everything into them. And, but the church has done a terrible job of raising its kids. And I'm not talking about parent children. I'm talking about the church discipling the baby Christians that were brought to their door and brought into their church. They've done a terrible job raising their kids. And at best, they've taught them you have this bottle for the rest of your life. And Paul tells us we're not supposed to stay on the bottle. I'm so pleased to see that how many children had a testimony and wanted to be baptized. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Because our children's ministry has grown. Mm -hmm. And see, now it's the responsibility of the church to represent Christ well and give them a true representative of what Christ looks like whether their natural family understands it or not so in essence the church has double duty 
represent Christ well so the kids see it. Now help the parent be better parents and a better model for Christ. And the only way we can do it, you're a bad parent. You should tell the kid this. You should tell the kid that. That's right. That's wrong. Do this. Do that. Jesus never did that. Jesus went to them and go, this question, that question. And they answered it. And he helped them. If they were sick, he healed them. Yeah. If they were hungry, he fed them. Yes, he loved them. He, he took where they were at mm -hmm. and didn't just use words, yeah. but he used action. Yeah. But his, his question, Jesus, if you... If you go through scriptures, I promise you there was more times when Jesus was asked a question and he answered it with a question than he answered the question. Oh yeah, you see it all the time. No, why, why would Jesus, if I asked Jesus a question, why would he ask me a question back and not answer my question? Why did he do it? Because Jesus knew the question they asked was not the real question. The question they wanted to ask, they can't ask because they're too hurt to ask it. So they're going to ask a less threatening question. They're going to ask, so you know, if you notice, and especially if you listen to kids, when they usually ask questions, they're asking questions to get you to agree and affirm what they're asking about. Yes. They're not asking the real question. Adults do it too because we get trained that way. So the question we ask, most of the time, the first question we ask is never the right question. And that's why Jesus always asks the right question. Because remember, go back to the woman at the well. Jesus, asked, She asked Jesus a question. He didn't go, you know, he didn't ask her no questions. He asked her, how many husbands do you have? He said, you're right, you got more than one. You got five. And the fifth one's waiting for you. He always asks the right question. So it goes back to allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through us to do what Jesus would do if he was here. And by the way, the Holy Spirit lives in us and he wants to do the same thing Jesus did when he was walking the earth. And he wants to heal people and help them understand who they are. If Christians do not understand who we are in Christ, we can't help other people know who they are in Christ. 